Uh, today I'm going to talk on a topic that I think we need because as uh, when uh, Pastor Said asked me to come and speak to you people here today to take over today's service for him, I was kind of asking the Lord because I like preparing new messages all the time and I was asking him, okay, Father, what should I share with your children here? It didn't even take away a while. said, you can tell them something that will that will excite them, that will motivate them, that will encourage them to know where they are in their lives and to see the future, that the future is indeed bright. Because many people have been discouraged. Many people don't know uh, what they want to do. Sometimes you tell them that this, this is the way to go about it. They say, oh no, I've tried that one before. It doesn't work. But God is in the business of exalting himself in the lives of his children. Why? Because he wants to bless you. He wants to see something happening for you. So I'm going to teach this morning or preach this morning from the book of Isaiah 60 verse 1. This is a message I actually preached not too long ago in um, in uh, New Warden, I think, in New Warden. I preached this message not too long ago about Arise and Shine. Why God gave me this topic for you people today is because many people are depressed, many people are going through issues, they are going through financial difficulties, they are going through one thing or the other. But God's word says that you should arise and shine because it's about to do something in our lives. Some of us don't know how to arise and shine, but the word of God says arise and shine. I've, I've talked to a lot of people. You know, when you minister the word of God, you come across a lot of people, you talk to people all the time, you see people that are discouraged. When people are discouraged, some are going through issues in life, going through divorce, going through rejection, going through financial difficulties, even sicknesses, a lot of things are going on in the body of Christ among Christians. Amen. Amen. So the Bible says in Isaiah 60 verse 1, it said, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of God is risen upon you. Most people don't understand the importance of the phrase, arise and shine. Really, indeed, because sometimes we read certain things in the scripture, not everybody understands what it really means. And I pray by the time I finish uh, my message today, you will get to understand what arise and shine actually meant for you. Amen. As a result, they, they live their life is echo. What I mean to say is that many people don't understand the phrase arise and shine because they do not understand it. So as a result of the lack of understanding, many people they live their lives in circle. They are not moving forward. Amen. They simply don't understand how to arise and shine. Some people arise and shine when you see the sun and say, oh, today is a beautiful weather. I want to go to the beach. Oh, today is a nice weather. I want to have some barbecue because being the Sunday. So some people, that is their shining. That is their shine. But that's not what God is telling us to do. Amen? Amen. So today, as I'm standing before you, I speak, I will speak the light of God to shine in your life. Amen. Today, I encourage you to arise and shine. It doesn't matter what circumstances that you are in, I encourage you to arise and shine. Amen. However, to arise and shine doesn't happen overnight. It's a progressive thing. It's something you have to position yourself to provoke to happen in your life. You want to arise and shine. Yes, everyone wants to arise and shine. Everybody wants to attain something in life. But you need to position yourself in that place whereby God has purpose for you to arise and shine. Amen. Amen. You will need to position yourself. What I mean by positioning is by seeking God. Because there are certain things you are going through in your life and you want to arise and shine over that particular issue. You want to arise and shine over that particular struggle. So you need to seek the face of God for it. You need to ask God where and where is this thing written in the Bible. As you seek God through his word, he begins to direct you. And then you find yourself arising and shining. You need to arise and shine. Place yourself in the place of seeking as well as engaging yourself in an active prayer life. To arise and shine requires for you to engage in an active prayer life. It doesn't happen overnight. Many people sometimes, I see a lot of people, they call pastors. Oh, pastor, I'm having this issue. Pray for me. It's okay to ask pastors to pray for you. But you yourself, you need to pray for yourself. You yourself, you need to do something for yourself. It's not only pastor, because God is your father. He created you and has given you everything. 
So God is expecting you to come to him one on one. Bring your request to him. Bring your problems to him so that he can hear it from you, not from the voice or the mouth of someone else. Amen? Amen. Are you understand what I'm saying? Amen. So, to arise and shine is the divine ability of the believers. Before God says that you should arise and shine, it's an ability endowed within you that you can use to provoke certain things to happen for you. Amen. Amen. It is the divine ability of the believers. The word of God says, I'll read it again, in Isaiah 61, to arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord risen upon you. I just read from NIV version. I want to read it from Amplified Version for you to understand the, the dimension of this scripture. It said, Arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you. It said, Arise from the depression, arise from the prostration in which circumstances, situations has kept you. It said, Arise to a new life. Come out of where you are. Come out of this depression. Come out of this life and arise to a new life. Maybe you are sick somewhere in your body. The Bible says by his stripes you are healed. So you take God's word and walk with it and arise to a new life. And arise to healing body. Hallelujah. It says shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come. Be radiant. Be radiant and shine. Be sparkling with the glory of God that is upon you because your light has come. Who is our light in this dispensation? Dispensation of grace is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The glory is in you. Amen. To arise and shine. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The risen, the glory has been risen upon you. Many people, what I always say to people, many people don't understand the significance of the Holy Spirit that is within them. The Spirit of God is the glory of God that is inside of you. Your body is just an, an embodiment that is sharing the glory of God that is within you. So in everything you go through in life, you need to understand the glory that is within you. Overlook the flesh. Overlook the physical. Look to the Spirit. And if you don't understand how to look into the Spirit, that is where you have to go into prayer. As you begin to pray, you serve a God that speaks. He will begin to speak to you. You begin to discern things. You begin to, that's why some of you sometimes, you want to do something, you say, oh, it's like something is telling me to do this thing. No, that is the presence of God telling you to do these things. Don't overlook these things. You have to know where God is speaking to you. Amen. Amen. So the scripture is basically telling us, telling you and me, not only you and me. He said, arise and shine. In other words, to jubilate. Arise and shine. It means come out and jubilate. That is a strong guarantee. Jubilate because the situation you are going through has been taken care of. Yeah? It's telling us to arise above distress. Arise above depression. Arise above sickness. Arise above condemnation. Arise above rejection. Arise above poverty. Because you serve a God who is able to change your circumstances. So he's telling you jump and jubilate because the glory has been risen upon you. In fact, sometimes we all, we all go through issues in life. We all have our issues. But we deal with them differently based on your on the, your understanding of the scripture and your relationship with God. I was just telling uh, a woman of God not too long ago that I have come to the place whereby I'm no longer afraid of what anything that will come my way because I know the tool to tackle it. You have the word of God. You have Christ in you. You have the Holy Spirit that is guiding you. That is teaching you how to tackle things. When you have these three things in check, you have Christ, you have the Word, you have the Holy Spirit. You have nothing to fear. You only need to know how to use them and exercise them to your benefit. Hallelujah. Many Christians are suffering because they don't understand left to right. They don't even know how to, they don't know how to pray. They don't know how to pray. The time that we are in is a time of warfare. 
Don't you see what is happening? Mm. The atmosphere is charged with demonic powers. So if you sit down and fold your hands, the devil will demoralize you. The devil will destroy your life. In fact, he will inflict your health mm. with sickness. We are not in the time to pray careless prayer. I'm not saying that you have to be worried all the time, but you must take warfare seriously. You must take prayer life in the time that we are in seriously. Because God has given us everything needed to fight the enemy. But some of us, we don't know how to fight the enemy. We don't know how to counteract the enemy. So that's why the enemy keeps on getting the Christians. Keep on tormenting Christians. Keep on taking from Christians. He takes from Christians, inflicts sicknesses, inflicts poverty, destroy Christians' home, destroy Christian marriages, cause poverty in the lives of Christians. Yet the Bible says, arise and shine. We don't know how to arise and shine. Because if we do, we will be suffering from all those things. Amen. Because the scripture is telling us to arise above whatever God has not permitted in the heaven concerning you. Anything that God has not permitted in heaven concerning you, it says arise above it. You know, this is one of my prayers. I say, Father, anything you have not permitted in heaven concerning my life and my children ceased to exist this moment. Because Jesus says, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, your will, God's will is to be done on earth over your life, over the church, over your community, your family, in this world. But we don't know how to, in fact, Christians are suffering, sometimes I don't have words to express it. It said, let your will, your will, the will of the Father be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now ask yourself, is poverty in heaven? There's no poverty in heaven. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no lack in heaven. There's no rejection in heaven. All these things I'm mentioning, they are the attributes of the enemy. The attributes of God is blessings, joy, happiness, wealth, prosperity, good health. So anything else is of the enemy. So whatever you are suffering from, you have to ask yourself, is this from God? The moment you know that it's not from God, you go into prayer with the word of God, you can that thing. I always tell my team, I say, whenever you see a situation before you, arrest the situation in the spiritual realm. You have to arrest the situation in the spiritual realm so that it will not manifest in your life, not manifest in your life physically. Because everything that happens to us in life, first and foremost, we transfer in the realm of the spirit before it comes to the physical. So if you understand how to freeze that situation in the spiritual realm, that situation cannot manifest in your life physically. Hallelujah. Amen. Arise and shine. For this purpose, Jesus Christ came and was made manifest and to empower us believers by his spirit to bring salvation Amen. to mankind. Thank you, Jesus. Is salvation only by being saved? No. Saved, being saved from darkness into light is the ultimate. But all the other thing also follows. The Bible says that by his stripes we are ill. In other words, health is part of the salvation. The Bible says that though he was rich, he was made poor in order for us to be rich. So, wealth and prosperity is part of the salvation. Amen? Amen. Amen. Miracles, signs and wonders are part of the salvation. Why do people only think that being saved and being in the church Coming to church Sunday, go back home, go to weekly services, that is only the salvation. No! Those are not only the salvation. It, it entails a lot of things. God gave us this earth, and he said we should have dominion. But the devil took over him from Adam and Eve. And Christ came and retrieved it back from him. Because the Bible said that Jesus made a spectacle of him and shed him. So he, had, he no longer has power over us if you understand what Christ has done for you on the cross. 
Many people are afraid of afraid of the devil. You are not supposed to be afraid of him because he no longer has power because he was shamed and bound by Christ. So you have all the tools in your hands. Some people don't even read their Bible only to the, on Sundays when they come to church. Only Sunday, some don't open their don't, don't even have Bibles at all. Some don't open their Bibles at all, only when they get to church. Let me tell you one thing. You are serving God, and everything about God is written in the Bible. And yet you don't read the Bible. How can you understand the God that you're serving? If you don't read the Bible, how can you know the way to get to, to achieving healing for yourself? If you don't read the Bible, how will you know where God is talking about prosperity? Being a Christian is not just coming to church only. It entails a lot. If you have the Bible, you have to read the Bible to know what God is talking about in the Bible. It's through the Bible you get to know what God has given you. The do and don't of God. Many Christians do not understand the do and don'ts. If you read the Bible, it's full of condition. There are places you will read God will say, if you do this thing, I will do this thing. If you do this, I will do this. So in other words, that which you are believing God for, if you are doing anything that is contrary to what God is saying, you know, that means you will not get it. Because you are bypassing the law. That is why it is very important for you to read the Bible. So when you read the Bible, you know the do's and don'ts of God. By knowing the do's and don'ts of God, that's the true, in fact, that is the only way to enjoy Christianity. People think Christianity is difficult. It's not difficult. You can live the life of God. You can live the joyous, glorious Christian life on earth and be wealthy and live in good health and still make heaven. People think that when you want to make heaven, you don't need to be rich. You don't need to be wealthy. You need to look hard at You need to pretend to be holy. Yeah. You can have everything here on earth and still make heaven. Do you think God created diamonds, gold, oil, all these things, all these resources, the blessing on this earth for us to live a harder life and come to heaven? You think God don't have anything to do in heaven? And then now he created you and he said, you go to this world and live your poor life and live in sickness and live in lack, rejection, suffering for the rest of your life. When you are done, and then you die and come back to heaven because God doesn't have anything better to do in heaven but to, enter, to bring you here and live where one life. That is not the God we serve. That is not the God we serve because the God we serve, if you look at yourself, look at yourself in the mirror. Look at you. God has created you special. Amen. And he endows speciality in you. Amen. He said, arise and shine. He said, for the light, the glory of God has been risen upon you. What does that statement mean? He said, tell you, just basically telling you, come on, you don't understand what I have given you. You don't understand the things I have given you. Now is the time for you to understand it. He said, because the glory to achieve those things that I have given you, they are in you. So what are you waiting for? Come out of your slumberness. Come out of poverty. Come out of lack. Come out of failure. Come out of compliance. Many people, they complain 24 7. Oh, God is not blessing me. I go to church all the time. Nothing is happening. On Sunday, I'm in church. Weekly services and present. Yet I'm going through this. Nothing is changing. Who told you that? You think God is a wicked God? No, not at all. No. No. No, God doesn't have anything to do in heaven. He says, Oh, this child that is praying. I will never answer the prayer of this person. This, my child, has been fasting, fasting and praying. I will not answer the prayer. If God is like that, it means you are serving a wicked God. Can I put a bit of oil? I don't want to scream my voice. It means you are serving a wicked God. 
Am I talking to somebody? So that is not the God we serve. Hallelujah. Amen. Things may seem discouraging at the moment. Things may appear as if God is a million miles away. Sometimes we look at things as if God is not around. Sometimes we are going through, going through issues as if God is a million miles away from us. We are praying and praying. You say, you don't hear anything, you don't feel anything. Does that mean God is not around? God is there with you. Amen. Amen. Do you want to know why, how God is with you? The Bible said that the Spirit of God is in you. Hallelujah. And He will forever be with you. You know that what God is in the inside of you. Amen. You know, some time ago I had one vision. And this vision, it was very strange. I saw the enemy, Satan, and miss people. And God opened my eye and I saw. I said, ah, that is devil, Satan himself among those people. They don't know that he's him. You should know that Satan is always in disguise. Mm. They don't know that that is him there. So he saw me. When he saw me, he said, he said to one of his demons, he said, that one, go after her. Go after her because she's going to give me headache in the future. And when I saw that vision, I said, God, this is something. This is profound. If I'm going to give Satan headache in the future, in other words, I see something inside of me that will give him the headache. And I said to God, I'm going all the way with you. I'm going all the way with you. That way that the enemy has saw in me, that he knows I will give him headache. I want to go that place. I want to arrive at that place. Because he doesn't want it to take, I will go all the way. What do you take to go all the way? Seek God. Read the scripture. Walk in holiness. Amen. Do away with bad things. Amen. Be prayerful. You will arrive at your purpose. Amen. Our God is not a wicked God. Amen. Our God is not a wicked God that he wants us to suffer. He's not a wicked God that he wants you to be in sickness. Let me tell you, the devil is always attacking me. Sometimes he will say, oh, you're going to be sick here. I will say, eh, I will sick here. Okay. <laughs> then I wake up in the morning. I will pray, 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 pray. pray. Hey! I pray. Hey! I pant you. You sick the way you're coming from. The word of God said that your will be done on earth and peace in heaven. In this body, sickness cannot live in this body. Sickness and the Holy Spirit cannot coexist in my system. So therefore, I pant you sickness. I command you to leave my body right now. In the name of when I pray, the thing go away. Hallelujah. Even on my head, sometimes maybe I have engagement, I have a ministry, a preaching engagement to go to. And maybe I wake up in the morning and have a headache. I'll say, Come on. I don't have room for headache. Hallelujah. I don't have room, no time and room for headache. Therefore, you headache, I command you to go. It goes the way. You can command, Jesus said, He said, You will command to mount, He said to the mountain be removed. And that mountain will be removed. That means anything in your life, you can speak to it to be removed. Yeah. I don't have, listen, I don't have room to, for sickness. I'm always telling you, but I say my body is anti sick, anti sickness. <laughs> this body is anti sickness. <laughs> it is what you profess with your mouth will make room for your life. Yes. What are you saying with your mouth? Hey. What are you confessing? What do you say when you wake up in the morning? When you stand before the mirror, what do you say? What do you profess over your life? Do you say, oh, today is going to be a tough day? Or you wake up in the morning and say, oh, today is a beautiful day. All the goodness of this day that God has released in heaven. They are my portion. I'm walking in favor. I'm walking in glory. Nothing, no lack will come my way today. I will not have bad news. There will be no bad statement over my life. In fact, anything I propose to achieve this day will be successful. I will attend. You begin to speak good things over. He said, arise and shine. You will not arise and shine without doing nothing. You have to engage in something. You have to be active in the things of God in your life to see the result of that. Arise and shine. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you may be in spiritual darkness at the moment. For this purpose, Jesus Christ came. He came to brilliantly shine in your darkness. In your circumstances. Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He said, who, who, He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. I don't know how you understand the scripture. It said he is the light of life. Light is progressive. It's, it's, it's indispensable commodity. If you put the light in this place off now, let's say in the night, everywhere will be dark. When you're walking, you will not see where you're going. But with the light in you, 
He said, I'm the light of the world. He that comes or follows or believes in me will no longer be in darkness. So in other words, you have the light in you. That light is your touch light. It's your path. If you follow it, you can no longer be in darkness. Anything you make up your mind to do in life, you will achieve. Sometimes the way of God may take longer than the worldly way. But if you continue to pursue, if you continue to press on in that path, you will achieve it. 